Hello. Our story begins three years after Anakin was allowed into the Jedi Order. Per the request of the Chancellor, Anakin accompanied the elder politician on a secret mission into the lower levels of Coruscant. The Chancellor during this mission suggested that Anakin should leave the Jedi Order. Anakin did find this word of advice from Palpatine to be semi-reasonable. To say Anakin's time as a Jedi had been atrocious would be an understatement. He had little to no friends, he wasn't close with anyone, and his master was difficult to work with. It's not that Anakin didn't appreciate his master, but Obi-Wan and him just butted heads a lot. They couldn't ever come to an agreement. When Anakin returned to the temple after a short stint with Palpatine, he heavily considered leaving the Order. He was actually at the moment looking for his master. He was going to tell Obi-Wan that he'd prefer to leave the Jedi Order, no longer wanting to be a Jedi. Anakin simply didn't believe it'd be worth his time. Perhaps he would get his belonging with Palpatine or even go back to Tatooine and free his mother from slavery. Skywalker walked throughout the massive temple looking for Obi-Wan. He decided that he would check the archives, considering Kenobi was just about always inside the archives, reading and whatnot. When Anakin walked in, they were pretty much empty, so he looked around. If Obi-Wan was here, then surely he would find him quickly. Anakin stumbled forward and he saw a holocron. While Anakin didn't ever like coming into the archives for classes and whatnot, he couldn't help but notice that he was looking at a holocron from the restricted section of the archives. He thought about sneaking into the restricted section a number of times, but why sneak in when a master could simply forget the holocron outside? Anakin took the holocron and examined it. Just holding it in his hands alone allowed him to feel the radiant energy that vibrated off of it. He couldn't help but think of what kind of information or how much information was stored within it. Anakin got a little flustered. He remembered that he wasn't paying attention during one of his most recent classes where they discussed how to open up a holocron. It was a step-by-step -step process of how to open one up and look into his knowledge. Anakin thought about how he could approach this. With the archives being as empty as they were, he might as well just figure it out right where he was. Or, of course, he could take it and hide in a different part of the archives until he could figure out how to open it. In his mind, that didn't seem like a good idea, because if he got caught, he'd probably get in trouble. If he just used a hologram here, it would look like he was just simply curious if he got caught. By the looks of things, he didn't think he would get caught. He sat down at his seat and picked up the holocron, closing his eyes and trying to remember what was said to him in that one lesson. He focused into his mind and he thought about something. He connected himself into the holocron and slowly felt it levitate into the air. He could feel the sides of the holocron twisting and turning as if he was doing it with his bare hands. Anakin continued forward ever so slightly and he could feel the secrets of the holocron being accessed. Instead of his mind, he was able to see a number of chests. It was like his mind was just able to come up with it as a way to open the holocron's secrets. He looked inside and he could feel the information slowly creeping out towards him. Anakin decided to open himself up more, and he could see the Jedi of the past as they filled these holocrons with the information that he was currently taking in. The information was incredibly old, not old in comparison to the 25,000 or so years old that the Jedi had been around. With the holocron opened up, he could hear the individual telling him what the Jedi Master who had taken the holocron out wanted to learn. The Jedi Master was an elder man. He stood there with a prideful expression on his face, and suggested that the individual using the holocron get into the Form 6 Atara reverse grip stands. Anakin didn't understand what was just said to him. His eyes watched closely as the elder Jedi Master ignited an elegant lightsaber and prepared himself in the exact same form as was described. He continued and explained to use the particular form was to disarm an opponent in the most effective way. The Jedi Master showed the demonstration slowly and then brought in a training droid and performed the same move on the droid. Anakin watched in awe before it was quickly interrupted by the Battle Master Syndralic himself. He'd been watching the old recordings as he was preparing the Temple Guards for a series of new tests. Plus, there were new members being brought into his ranks, especially as other ones were moving away from life as Temple Guards. Anakin looked at Syndralic. His eyes were larger than the moons of Yavin. He profusely apologized. Master Dralek smiled and told him to come along. Anakin asked if he was in trouble and Sin told him that he wasn't. He was just simply informing Jakash and knew that one of her little helpers did something they weren't supposed to do. Anakin was really confused what this meant. And before he could ask, Jakash knew came around the corner. Sin Dralek told her that the boy was using a restricted section holocron. Master Jakasta looked down and then back to Sin Dralek with confusion. She expressed that the boy wasn't on her staff. He was just as confused as she was. Jocasta waved Syndralic away and told him that she would handle it from here. Anakin looked up and asked if he was in trouble again. She took him by the shoulder gently, and she shook her head. The two of them walked over to another location that was more separated from the rest of the archives. She asked Anakin to sit down, so he didn't, and she sat across from him, asking him why he was going into people's holocrons without asking. Anakin looked at her, and then he said no one was here. He was just curious. She obviously knew he was curious, so she asked, then why wasn't he paying attention during his classes here inside the archives? He was always here with his classes, but instead of paying attention, he was fiddling around with his class supplies or a tablet. Anakin blankly looked at her, and she figured that she'd have to answer her own questions. She obviously didn't know Anakin too well, so 
The prospect of this conversation was already kind of awkward. She suggested that perhaps he was a slow learner and he didn't know how to adjust to his classes, even though it had been a couple years. Anakin kind of shrugged his shoulders. Dracosta asked him if it was because the information he was being taught felt redundant. Anakin kind of nodded his head and shrugged his shoulders again. Dracosta suggested something else, which was if he felt left out because of everyone else knowing each other, and so he never felt a part of the conversation. Anakin nodded his head without shrugging his shoulders. Despite Obi-Wan being Anakin's master, Skywalker still had a couple basic classes with younglings that he needed to complete, which would be why he felt so secluded. Jocasta looked around the archives. She called him by his full name. Truthfully, she was kind of just assuming Sinjalik was tired. Everyone in the Order knew who Skywalker was, and Sinjalik did too. But leaving out the holocron and not realizing Anakin was basically too young to be one of her assistants, she kind of just figured Sinjalik was tired. She told Anakin that if he would like to learn, then he could help her out in the archives. He looked at her with a blank face. Yeah, how exciting. Spending all of his free time helping out Master Jocasta knew with things inside the archives. She knew that someone like Anakin wouldn't find it fun, but then she continued and suggested that there are plenty of things that he could find interest in while being in the archives. Anakin looked at her cross-eyed, so she spelled it out for him. If he joined her in the archives, yes, he'd be doing work for her in his free time, time that Anakin could spend working on lightsaber training or just avoiding everyone else inside the temple, but most of the work would be filling things out with her and helping her keep everything cleaned up. However, he would also be able to join her in the restricted section from time to time. She would tell him about things he had questions about. She would treat him in a way like one of her own students, just as she did any other of her assistants. She continued and told him that while the archives didn't seem all that interesting at first, Anakin would be able to get full understanding and knowledge that was so important and integral to being a Jedi, one-on-one -on -one at that. To be a Jedi was to seek knowledge, to have peace of mind and heart, and she sensed that Anakin didn't have much of that. She told him that while he wasn't supposed to be opening up holocrons from restricted section just like he did, sometimes they'd have to repair holocrons, which she would show him how to do. Anakin asked if she was trying to turn him into an archivist. She expressed that while she hoped that one of her many assistants would become archivist, the reality is, is that only one or two of them would be. Anakin asked why, and she smiled with a little chuckle, and she told him that much like him, most Jedi found it boring. She understood that, but it was a good way for some of the Jedi who felt like they lacked belonging in other spots inside the temple, that they could find some belonging here. She stood up and told him that despite their age difference, she understood him, to a degree. Jocasta told Anakin that it was getting late. He wasn't in trouble for his actions, but she would like to see him come back here tomorrow. Of course, if he was willing to come. She suggested that he head along and get some rest. Anakin got up and thanked her, with a bow, before scurrying away. Upon his return to his room, he'd consider it. This involved him pacing around his room talking to himself. Sometimes for him, it helped to talk out his emotions to himself. He could hear his thoughts rather than simply hide them away in his mind. Plus, Jedi rooms were so soundproof no one could really hear him yapping away to himself. Truthfully, he hated the idea of becoming an archivist, and he didn't like the idea of spending his free time inside the archives. But he made a deal to himself. Skywalker was a good kid, and he figured that since Jocasta knew gave him a break, he might as well go and help her for like a week or two as a way to say thanks, and if he liked it, he could stay. If not, he could leave. To him, it was a perfect balance. He never thought he would like it anyways. He was just so focused on adventures, pod racing, and dreams about Padme, instead of worrying about the archives. Though not for nothing, picking up some cool information here or there would be a nice benefit. Anakin hopped into bed and went to sleep. In the following days, he would return to the archives to be Jocasta New's little assistant. Not for nothing, it was incredibly boring to Anakin. He simply went out, collected things for her, or joined her in a couple of computers in the archives to help retain some information or transfer it around. While he found this to be rather boring, he actually enjoyed being around Master Jocasta. It may have been the only benefit to being with her in the archives. It was mostly because she was so kind to him, in a way. She was kind to him in the way that his mother would have been with him, so nice until he got on her nerves. It was maternal, but it was more of a grandmother-like maternal. She didn't express love or anything of the sort like Shmi would have, but it was enough of a feeling for Anakin that it didn't matter. It was literally just something, and something was more than nothing. At the end of the first week, he convinced himself to stay for another week, and then after that it became a habit. During his second week, he got to digest his first little tidbit of deep Jedi lore, since his first encounter with the Elder Jedi from the Restricted Section Holocron. This particular addition had nothing to do with lightsabers or combat, it was just information about the Force. Two weeks beforehand, if he was told he would learn deep Jedi lore, he would express his lack of care for it. But when he obtained the knowledge he was presented inside the Holocron, he had to continue learning. It was weird. It was like a normal day with Master Jocasta, and she told him that they would be working together to fix a Holocron. 
Jocasta accidentally, but brilliantly, put Anakin into the scheduled time where no one else was available to help her. Most of Jocasta's assistants were older, ranging from 18 all the way to 50. These assistants would have handled this for her, but because they weren't around, she showed Anakin what to do if he was here by himself. Because the temple was so old, and many of the holocrons were too, sometimes they needed to transfer the information from an older holocron into a newer one. She showed Anakin how to do it, but as they were doing it, Anakin got to learn about the emotion of a long-lost order. He found it to be so peculiar, and so as an inquisitive individual, he asked her about it. Jocasta didn't have all the answers, so instead she gave him her thoughts on the matter and why what was being told inside the holocron didn't resonate with the current order. Anakin then asked her if he presented such a holocron to Obi-Wan if he would get in trouble. Technically no, but technically yes. It was a restricted section holocron, so he shouldn't have access to it. But because he did as an assistant, he wouldn't technically be wrong. The reason Anakin wanted to know is because at the moment he and Obi-Wan were butting heads over emotion. Again. It was Obi-Wan trying to reinforce something he was taught as a youngling. The holocron that they just repaired happened to need repairs. No one had been looking at it or using it in over a millennia. It was the only reason Jocasta wanted to fix it. Over the following months and years, Anakin would become disenchanted with Palpatine. This disenchantment came a lot from the short encounter they had when he was a boy. He would have missed out on so much. The way Palpatine talked about the Jedi is as if there wasn't some sort of soul in their order. He disregarded it and couldn't believe he listened to it when he was a boy. Anakin, while being Obi-Wan's student, Jocasta's assistant, and a frequent member inside the archives was able to learn more than he would have otherwise. He learned about what a lightsaber was meant to be for a Jedi, which was literally nothing but an accessory. A Jedi does not a lightsaber make. To be a Jedi was so much more than a laser sword, as some of the older members used to call it. It was enforced by Yoda's masters nearly a thousand years before. Anakin understood that these lessons had been forgotten to time. However, even though he understood this, he was a far superior user of the lightsaber than he would have been otherwise. While Anakin wanted to move into Form 5, he ended up falling into Form 6, which was a combination of all the forms that came before it. This was a choice, though an unintentional choice at that. Anakin began using Form 6 because so many holocrons about the other lightsaber forms had been left out. He took his knowledge of them and put it to practice, which ended up kind of combining into his own variation, and then he fixed it into Form 6. Jocasta knew about this, but she didn't encourage it, though because Anakin was very honest about his understanding of what a lightsaber was supposed to mean for a Jedi, she was content with his learning of other forms. This didn't happen just with the lightsaber, but a number of other lessons. He knew how to wield a force in a way that not even he could have imagined, and by the time he was 17, Obi-Wan believed he was ready for the trials. His time inside the Jedi Archives allowed him to understand what made a truly great Jedi without losing himself. Because as it turns out, Skywalker made a terrific Jedi. He just overestimated what he would have to give up to be one. The lessons on emotion sat within him, but he didn't express anything about it often because there was no need to. He just fell in love with the idea of learning and continuing to do so. When he finished his training with Obi-Wan, he told Master Jocasta that he would like to become a full-time archivist. Master Kenobi saw this coming from yesterday, so it was a big reason why he was quick to suggest Anakin try and pass the trials. Anakin was the best of both worlds for a Jedi. He was a negotiator that Master Kenobi was. He was a swordsman like Obi-Wan, but far more aggressive. On the other side of that, he was very knowledgeable as an individual. He knew so much about the Jedi and the Force, and because of his young, vibrant, and excitable energy, he was able to inspire even the likes of those on the Council. Many Jedi became very fond of him, because he didn't have a temperament, he wasn't egotistical, and he wasn't cynical. He retained lessons taught to him by Obi-Wan, many of the early ones being about his lust for victory. Anakin learned a lot from his time with Jocasta Nu, and with the sense of belonging he got from Grandma Jocasta, he didn't long for things that a Jedi shouldn't long for. It made him a terrific Jedi in the end. Becoming a knight so early on made his name stick out more to other Jedi, but many Jedi respected him for this. For Council members, they had a legitimate level of trust with him, which is extremely important, especially for Council members. If they couldn't trust him, there'd be issues with them and him. The Council pondered the idea of giving him a student, but Obi-Wan rejected this idea because he believed that Anakin should be allowed to choose that direction for himself. The reason Obi-Wan didn't suggest they give him a student was also in part to the fact that Skywalker had much more interest in becoming an archivist rather than a master. Jocasta had many assistants who worked with her to help her out simply because the archivist way was dying off. As expressed by her, not many Jedi these days had the patience to become archivists, and it left Jocasta new with a genuine worry that no one would be able to maintain the information of the Order when she died. And Skywalker was the individual that could do that. 
though he and Jocasta had an understanding with each other. Anakin was still young, and he didn't have the intention of fully becoming an archivist at the moment. This was shorthand for Anakin wanted to continue learning with her, but if he had the opportunity to go out into the galaxy on a mission, then he would accept it. This was mutually understood and agreed upon, mostly because Jocasta was so determined to get someone to replace her when she inevitably died. The next two years of Anakin's life would be similar to the ones that came before. When he was in the temple, he was with Master Jocasta. When he wasn't in the temple, he was doing missions on behalf of the Jedi Order. It was a simple life, until it no longer was. As those two years went by, the political atmosphere of the galaxy shifted, and with an assassination attempt on Senator Amidala, Anakin was thrusted into yet another solo mission. He didn't mind. He had no clue how bad things had truly gotten. So when he and Padme were en route to Naboo in a civilian transport after a bounty hunter tried to end her life, they were able to have some alone time to actually talk. During this talk, they spoke about emotions of being a Jedi. And while most believed that Jedi weren't meant to express their emotions, Anakin said that to be wrong. He told Padme that every single being had emotions, even Jedi. Though the Order of Late had discouraged such feelings. However, at least according to older texts of the Jedi Order, Jedi were encouraged to express their feelings. Though it wasn't blatantly expressing emotion, it was more or less having the capability to be emotionally intelligent. Having such a thing permitted a Jedi to be the best version of themselves. And so despite the fact that Jedi weren't supposed to harbor emotions, he did so, but within the confines of what was to be accepted. He carried himself with a few slogans he believed to be fair representations of an individual, especially a Jedi, with the knowledge he had. The strength to be gentle, the courage to be brave, and the mindfulness to be open. They were all aspects that Anakin clung to. Not only did these attributes make him a good Jedi, but a good person as well. Padme was very impressed with him. He carried himself as an adult. And for her, that was actually attractive. Though Anakin was mostly concerned with carrying out his mission, and so he didn't pick up on some of the subtle, flirtatious hints that Padme was laying out for him. Their time on Naboo didn't last long, though. They had to quickly reroute and head to Tatooine. Anakin did learn of his mother's death, but using some of the attributes he held so close for so long, he was able to remain steadfast and strong throughout the endeavor. The words that he repeated to himself when his mother died in his arms was the strength to be gentle. He knew that instead of harming himself by killing others, he let go. Maybe it would be best, maybe not. But as a Jedi, one was not meant to harm others. He displayed his mindfulness to be open with Padme after he returned. He didn't suggest that he'd be the most powerful Jedi ever, or that he would learn to stop people from dying. He just accepted what was out of his control. After their stint on Tatooine, they'd be ushered to Genosis where the war began. Anakin hated the concept or the idea of the war, especially when several Jedi died around them trying to save Obi-Wan, Padme, and himself from the arena. What followed the arena was a battle and a showdown with Dooku. That went incredibly well, actually. It didn't result in the capture of Dooku, but Obi-Wan and Anakin went in together, and because they worked in tandem, they were able to expertly defend themselves from Dooku's strategic attack. This lasted until Yoda arrived and Dooku realized playtime was over, and quickly abandoned the facility, using the force to cave the ceiling down on the Jedi before leaving. They were able to keep the ceiling from crushing them, but once they were clear, Dooku was gone. The Clone Wars had begun. Anakin wanted no part in the war. He loathed the entire idea of participating in a clone war. Instead of helping out, he would first escort Padme back to Naboo, where they would share nothing more than a kiss before breaking apart. Anakin made it clear to the Jedi that he wanted no part in the war, and so he actively avoided it. For the following years, doing nothing but going out of his way to remain absent from it. He of course continued to learn as much as he could, but the one thing that sat in the forefront of his mind was avoiding the war. Ahsoka would become Kenobi's student, and Anakin would also avoid the idea of taking on a student. He feared for the younglings and the effect that the war would have on them, being that at this point he pretty much had all access codes of a normal archivist and he knew everything that happened prior to the Clone Wars, especially the younglings. What the Nile did the younglings during the High Republic and the Sith during the Old Republic. They didn't have to interact with these threats, mostly, but the youngling mindset was completely altered due to these threats in the galaxy. Anakin's knowledge continued to expand. He and Jocasta became nearly inseparable as the war continued to fly by. Anakin did train with a lightsaber and even became confident as a user of Form 6, but he didn't really have any reason to use it. As the war continued, he started having insanely detailed nightmares, none of them revolving around him or his peers, but they were just all so realistic and so terrible. Anakin often was waking up in screams in the middle of the night. Good thing the rooms were soundproof. Anakin had another night terror and he was just laying in his room, looking at the ceiling. He was tired of this. He had talked to Grandmaster Yoda about it, and Yoda gave him some advice. The advice was helpful and it did stop the nightmares for a couple of days, but then they returned. There were other Jedi Anakin talked to these nightmares about, including Mace Windu and Plo Koon and Shakti, but they still continued to come after these talks. Anakin got up and threw a lighter robe over his back and started for the door. He looked down the hallways when he opened the door and they were empty. 
To be expected, it was nighttime. He wasn't sure what time it was, but it was dark outside. He could see the lights flickering outside of his room before he left. Anakin felt the chill roll down his spine, but imagined it'd be nothing more than a midnight burst. He started down the hallway and towards the archives. Maybe he could find another holocron to get some rest. Anakin, as an archivist, this far into the war, had full access to everything in the archives. It was part of the training he received from Master Jocasta. He was able to read everything from interesting texts to boring ones. Whenever he had nightmares or night terrors, he came to the archives. It always felt so warm there. Typically in the morning, Jocasta would find him sleeping with his head slouched over in the archives when she came in. At this point, she would just slightly lean his head back and allow him to sleep for the rest of the time he needed to, instead of waking him up. She knew that if he woke him up, he wouldn't be able to get back to sleep, so it was the kind thing for her to do, for his sake at least. Anakin sat down at a long table and began looking for something to read. He heard a noise and then turned his head over, but it was nothing. Anakin took a deep breath and let out a massive yawn before something did catch his attention. A lightsaber ignited. That was peculiar. Anakin got up and turned around. He saw an individual cutting down temple guards. Skywalker reached for his weapon, but he couldn't find it. He left it in his room. He pulled one of the temple guard staffs into his hands and ignited it. One of the ones that died, at least. The man who attacked the guards was another temple guard. Skywalker leapt forward and swung aggressively at the man. The other temple guards stepped back, and as Anakin drove his blade forward, an explosion rocked the Jedi Temple. He had no clue what that was, but the temple guards quickly dispersed. Anakin quickly spun his blade around in his hands. He blocked and parried and struck as he moved forward. He was an incredible duelist, despite this being his first real confrontation since Dooku. He was magnificent in the fight. The man who was meant to become Grand Inquisitor stumbled backwards and he was cut down by Skywalker with a couple of swift strikes. Anakin turned back and saw Jakas knew. She asked him what he was doing. He told her that the temple was under attack or something. She knew that. She told him that the clones had broken through. She wanted to know why he killed a temple guard. Anakin wanted to know why the clones were here. Never mind their concerns, they needed to act quickly. Anakin did know the rules established for archivists in situations like this, so Skywalker quickly ran with her to the archive room. The two of them used the force to open up a secret pathway. Jocasta told Anakin to go. He looked at her, his hands trembling. He told her that he couldn't. Not yet. He needed to do something. A surge of heroics rose from within him. He told her that while she may have been the Elder, he wanted her to get the younglings out of her. Jocasta wasn't thrilled with his decision, but she knew he was far superior as a fighter to her, especially in her old age. He'd be able to help others a lot more than she would. So quickly, she turned another direction and ran. Anakin ignited the Temple Guard staff and ran forward. His body shook with fear as he did. Natural heroism and stoicism may have called to him, but the courage to be brave was one hell of a drug. Anakin rushed into the hall, seeing clone troopers not as mindless drones, but as sentient beings that he'd interacted with over the past three years on the few occasions he went to protect Padme during some of her missions. He couldn't believe this. Anakin Take blocked down, shots, trying to down. avoid killing the clones, but some of the shots just went back and clipped them. Anakin saw a group of younglings with an instructor, who was killed. Skywalker felt something he hadn't felt in years. Rage. He ran forward swinging his blade, cutting through varied arms and legs before leaping over the group of younglings and blasting forward with a vicious force push that shattered the bones of the men it hit. Anakin could hear it. Anakin looked down at the clones suffering in pain. He turned to the younglings and told them to get to the archives. The bring temple down, guards had set up a semi-perimeter around the archives. The man who came in fighting on behalf of the Sith had gotten stuck in a duel with the Battlemaster Syndralic. It bought the Jedi enough time to set up the defenses. With Grand Inquisitor dead, the Jedi were able to regather some of their forces and relocate them and begin an evacuation. Anakin moved quickly, trying to save as many of his peers as possible. It was so important to him, and yet he was lost. The war had never been so close to him as it was in this moment. Until this moment, just like for so many of his peers inside the temple, their allies turned against them and hunted them down like animals. He didn't know how to process it. So many of the Jedi present inside the temple avoided the war until it was here on their footstep. They were not just left unprepared, but easy to hunt. Skywalker tried to quickly tread through the temple, but his inexperience in combat left him fragile. He was able to safely get a number of younglings and Padawans to the archives, though he knew it was far too late when the temple guards began their retreat, telling him that the temple was lost. In the crowd, he saw a Jedi Master he recognized before. He was a younger man with a striking presence. Anakin could feel his guilt, the loss in his heart. Balin's skull barely defeated Syndralic, and that alone was enough to push him away from the darkness. He wouldn't stay loyal to the Jedi, but he also would not stay loyal to the Sith. Balin would disappear after the siege of the temple ended. Skywalker, on the other hand, got to the escape route with his brothers and sisters. The Jedi were able to take advantage of the siege and get the younglings out of the backside of the temple and rush them into the city and the surrounding areas. Anakin had a specific location to go to. 
Chikasanu gave the location to her assistants and the other archivists like Anakin. She had a safe space in case the order fell. It had been there for generations. She'd be able to use this place as a beacon of hope. She'd record hollow recordings and distribute them to Jedi to help them train and prepare for surviving a regime of terror. The rest of the Jedi were escorted out of the temple by Shakti who gave them different locations to go to. Perhaps splitting up was a bad idea, but she believed that if one of the groups were tracked, the others would have a better chance of survival. Shakti knew that Grogu was safe with Keller and Beck, so one third of the Jedi were sent to Osis, while the other went to Yavin 4 and the last group went to Tython. Shakti was going to Osis because unlike Yavin and Tython, there was no place of refuge on Osis, there was no structures left behind. She would be able to help the survivors bunker down until a common place was found. Shakti, being a council member, knew of where Jakasa was going, so it wasn't a concern to her where Anakin and her went. The order was in absolute shambles. No one knew what really happened or why it happened. All that was agreed upon is that they had to try and survive for as long as possible. In the coming hours, Obi-Wan would send out a message to the collective order, telling them what they needed to do to survive. Essentially, it was time to go into hiding until the time was right. For months, there wouldn't be any communication with Jakasa Nu and Anakin. They had no reason to believe that the survivors had all been killed, but they also had no reason to believe that they weren't. Jakas knew was getting antsy. She had recorded a number of lessons that could be used by future Jedi. Anakin did the same, but with the basics of lightsaber combat in each of the forms he at least had a basic understanding of. What the two archivists didn't know is that Yoda and Obi-Wan engaged at the Emperor. They lost to Sidious. He killed Obi-Wan and Yoda was forced to retreat with Ahsoka. Because of the temple guards, the temple had an incredibly high survival rate. There were only 1400 Jedi that survived but that's a lot more than what could have been. With so much loss, they couldn't afford to have a negative mindset either. Because Jocasta didn't know how many survived, she told Anakin that she was going to Coruscant to get some important information. They couldn't let the Sith have it. Maybe they waited for too long, but she had no reason to believe the Sith could find it. The holocron was hidden extremely well because it was the most important one in the archives. It was a list of every single Force-sensitive newborn baby in the galaxy. If the Sith got their hands on that, then every child with a natural affinity for the Force would be in imminent danger. Also, not for nothing, it'd be the perfect way to begin the rebuilding process. Anakin was split on this. He believed that she was right, but he also didn't want to lose her. He didn't know his master had been killed, and aside from the transmission every Jedi got, he was confident Obi-Wan was still alive. Skywalker didn't want Jocasta to hurt herself or get killed, but as she told Anakin, he was a future keeper of the knowledge. He was an archivist, and his importance could not be overstated. He understood the sentiment, but he didn't agree with it. However, he decided to listen to Jocasta as they said their goodbyes. While Sidious didn't have an apprentice anymore due to Balin Skull's disappearance, he had an empire, and even more than that, he had the necessary troops in the galaxy to kill whoever he wanted. Without Grand Inquisitor, he was constantly inside the temple looking for the exact list that Jocasta knew was going to grab. It was horrendous for her, because there was never a chance she would survive an encounter with Sidious, and when she arrived, he killed her the moment he felt her presence arrive into the temple. Anakin also didn't feel this, the reason being is that, as Yoda said, the dark side clouds everything. Despite not being able to feel it, once the day started to go by, he got the feeling that she might not ever come back. It left Anakin with a hard choice to make. He knew that the Order could be on Tython, Yavin 4, or Osis, but he didn't know what to do. He could risk it and go to one of those worlds and try and find the Jedi. He could go to Coruscant and try and find Jakash Anu, or he could simply just wait this out forever, which is something he just wouldn't do. Since Order 66, he trained more rigorously than ever before, and he was now more than ready than ever to go out and save his order. He could only hope that he didn't have to kill any more clones. That would be atrocious for him. Anakin took a Jedi starship and departed for Coruscant. When he arrived at the temple, he snuck through the corridors. He made his way through the halls of the temple, and he accidentally discovered something horrific. It was a message being sent to him by the Sith. It was Master Jocasta. Rope was tied around her torso, and it was strung across the ceiling. Anakin saw it, and he stopped in his tracks. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. He slid back around a corner and slid to the floor. He held his breath and he didn't know how to go forward. He failed her by not coming with her. Though the tragedy is, he would likely have died with her if he came originally, which is what made him feel worse about the entire thing. He could hear a number of clones coming his way, so he got up and took a deep breath and ran around the corner. He tried not to look at the body Jocasta knew and snuck into the bookshelves. Skywalker tried to think back. Jocasta told him where the holocron was. He just didn't remember at the moment. His head was pulsating at the moment, and he needed a way to remember where she said the holocron was. Skywalker ran into the restricted section and looked around. He closed his eyes and thought about where it could be, and then he remembered. It was hidden at the back of the archives, and when he got there, he heard a voice crawl over his shoulders. He realized the holocron was gone, and he turned around to look at a hooded figure. The hooded figure was not damaged. He never had an encounter with Windu. Sidious told Skywalker they had one chance to make the right decision. He told Anakin, 
That the order was destroyed. There was no one to fight for anymore. Skywalker looked at Sidious with a scowl on his face. He balled his fists, and he grabbed his lightsaber and ignited it. Sidious was disappointed, but in all fairness, there hadn't been an interaction between the two of them in about a decade, so Sidious didn't expect it to work anyways. He just figured Skywalker was too much potential to waste. So be it, though. Sidious launched himself forward. Their blades slammed together. Skywalker was thrown back. The power of this old man was far beyond what he could have ever expected. He caught himself and slid his blade against the Sith Lord as fast as he could. And the usage of Form 6 would come at an advantage for him here. While Skywalker wasn't quite as acrobatic, he did use the Form with incredible precision. He moved back against the Sith Lord, which wasn't easy, but Anakin saw an advantage. He knew this room better than the Sith Lord ever could in a few short months, so he slashed forward and ignited an explosion from the holocrons which forced Sidious to stop. Skywalker reached up and crushed the lighting system in the room, and it went dark. He grinned and ducked into the darkness. Sidious held his blades out and scanned the room for Skywalker. He ignited his second lightsaber and looked around. He could hear footsteps coming and he launched the lightsaber into a clone trooper, not realizing it was a clone trooper. Anakin swooped down from the ceiling and ignited his lightsaber. Sidious looked back at the last second to block the strike. A heavy attack threw him down. Anakin spun his blade around and launched himself forward, doing the fast-paced kickflip. His boot slammed into Sidious's jaw, which dropped into the ground faster than he could have ever prepared for him. Sidious ate the cement of the ground, and he wasn't out yet, though. He blasted Skywalker with lightning and vanished into the darkness again. <laughs> darkness was his ally. When Anakin looked up, he realized they only switched places. No matter, he rolled into the darkness and held his hand against the holocrons and closed his eyes. He felt through the force and he connected himself to every lesson he learned in the past. The most important one being battle meditation. He thanked Master Shan quietly and repeated the phrase he learned first from her, telling himself, I am with the force and the force is with me. Sidious so launched himself at Skywalker and jabbed forward. The blade went straight through Anakin's robes, but it didn't contact his skin. Skywalker's eyes opened and grabbed the wrist of Sidious and twisted it back and slammed his blade down onto Sidious' body. He could hear the clones coming for him and so he decided, instead of attacking, he'd wait. One of them had a droid popper on his belt and he flipped the switch on it and it shocked the clones as they fell to the ground. He used this as a diversion and he snuck out of the temple. He knew what to do. He couldn't let the galaxy suffer forever, so instead of leaving the planet, he went to a friend's home real quick. He didn't assume anything bad to come out of it, but he was safe. She was on his side. When Anakin entered the apartment complex, he came down from below and buzzed her room. She allowed him to enter. She thought it was a diplomat from Thyfair who was coming to help her with a bill she was writing against the Emperor. When the doors opened and Anakin walked through, she ran up and hugged him. Then she backed off, apologizing for ambushing him. He smiled and told her that there was nothing to apologize for. The two of them hugged again, and she asked what happened and he told her everything. From the execution of Order 66 all the way up to the death of the Sith Lord. Anakin was informed by Padme about the Emperor, and he realized that Palpatine was Sidious. He had no clue. He just thought it was weird that the Sith Lord called him Anakin like he knew him. Regardless, they eventually got around to the fact that he killed Sidious inside the temple. Padme saw this as a terrific opportunity. She got up and explained that she was sorry, but she needed to get the delegation ready. He told her it was okay. He needed to go and find the Jedi himself. Before he left, she grabbed his hands and told him that she wanted to see him again, and asked if she wanted to see him again. In a confident demeanor, he winked at her and turned to leave. Skywalker would go to Yavin, then the Tython, and then eventually to Osis, where the Jedi actually were. When he arrived, he was shocked to see how many had actually survived. Due to the death of the Grand Inquisitor and the disappearance of Balin's skull, Sidious gave up on the whole Jedi-Sith thing. Any Jedi found was killed or transported to a cloning facility, such as the one on Wayland. Anakin was greeted by Shock T, Windu, and Ahsoka. They were excited to see him because he was one of the archivists. He could have information that was saved from the temple. The Jedi hadn't been back, and so they assumed that it was all lost to the Empire. Though there was something different. Anakin first asked about Obi-Wan, and he was heartbroken to learn of his death. As for Yoda, he hadn't been seen in a month. He was on a mountain far away from the home that was built here for the Jedi. He went there to be in exile. He took the failure of the Order extremely personally, and it ate him up from the inside out. Once Anakin dealt with the learning of Obi-Wan's death, he came back. The most tragic part about seeing the abandoned camps on Tython and Yavin is he thought the Order had died. Then he saw the camp here on Osis and immediately thought that Obi-Wan was here. So the blow was even more devastating. Skywalker would help usher artifacts to Osis while Padme began deconstructing the Imperial Senate and the Empire. While Palpatine's rule was semi-popular, the delegation of 2000 could work extremely well without Palpatine overseeing everything. He was the reason why they struggled to begin with. The months following would be strenuous, but the Jedi had all their artifacts, mostly in part due to Anakin. Because of his efforts, the surviving members of the Council wanted to offer him a seat on the top of the Council with them. While everything lacked a ton of structure, it was the remaining Council members who were trying to get any semblance of order back into their order. 
Anakin said that he would as an archivist, but if he was going to do it, he would like to use his knowledge as an archivist to assist them in restructuring the Order. This didn't seem like a terribly big deal to the other Jedi, so they accepted it. How wrong they were. Skywalker had a lot of changes in mind. Not that he believed these would change the Order or save them in any way, but the Holocrons and the Jedi of old had such a lasting effect on him. The key changes were the access to not just emotion, but emotional intelligence. There was a big difference. He believed they would be integral to the rebuilding process because so many survivors were so young. If they were so young, then they would have a lot of trauma. The older Jedi would handle it better, but the younglings and Padawans who lost their teachers and so on, not so much. This emotional intelligence did carry into attachments, because despite his maturity at the moment, he had an interest in an attachment for himself. The Council could deny it was hard to just accept this, but Shakti encouraged it. If it was for the better of the Collective Order, then why not encourage something like a love connection, or attachments, or emotional intelligence? Anakin would bounce on and off world from time and time again. From Osis to Coruscant, that is. The love connection started slow, but with a fire between the two of them, it was allowed to blossom. Though because they only had so much time, they couldn't really focus on each other all the time. They had important roles. Padme was restructuring the Republic, and Anakin was doing the same thing with the Jedi. In a couple years, they'd be able to fully invest their time with each other. At a period where both the Republic and the Jedi were back in the new habits and new beginnings. Anakin's relationship with Padme and the Jedi wouldn't pull him apart. Rather, it would encourage him to continue being the best version of himself, which is exactly what he was, as the Chosen One Jedi Archivist, Anakin Skywalker. And that, my friends, is our story. Again, special thanks to Galvic Gaming, Tristan, Darth Bevan, Pim Diddy Bane, The Last Jedi, Apollo, Wee Wee 670, Anakin Shdank Runner, CT7567, Oz of Oz, Darth Knox, The Eternal Padawan, Johnny Jaguin, Sansa Skeleton, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Lord Kallik, Youngling Slayer 66, Mad Men Studios, Anakin 003, Forda's Legacy Star Wars, Lemon Knight, Rex the Wolf, The Man with Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing. For supporting the channel, smash the like button. The Sith Clone Wars has been finished. I'll be announcing the dates soon. I cannot wait to announce it. I got a really cool poster. I'm so excited. Um, Patrons will see that first, obviously. Anyways, let's talk about the story. So, obviously everyone's coming into this video. Oh, he's gonna be, he's gonna be an archivist. <laughs> well, guess what? Um, Anakin is gonna continue being Anakin because that's what I wanted to do with this story. I wanted to have like this, I had to, I wanted to have this weird dynamic where, where Anakin still remained himself, but being an archivist allowed him to have access to information that he wouldn't have otherwise. And I think Anakin is smart enough to figure that out. Like, he makes some really stupid decisions in the movies, but like, I think he's got like half a brain cell, so I think he would be like, oh yeah, actually, I can learn things from doing this. Obviously, the key to this, the key to him becoming an archivist is Jocasta New. Without Jocasta New, he wouldn't become an archivist, and that's something I wanted to emphasize, especially early on. But it also encourages Anakin to continue going outside of what he would normally learn, and because Anakin was so against learning and canon, it offers him a chance to learn other things and learn more about not just the Jedi, but himself. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed, I love you all, spread the love, and always remember my friends, may the force be with you.